I knew I should have stopped by and picked them up. They could be 400 miles down the road by now. I don't care where they are, so long as they're not next door to me. Oh, thank God. Sissy, are you alone? We're meeting here, and Uncle Gus, too. And Santa Claus promised to show up with the Easter Bunny, Uncle Gus. I didn't find him, did you? I must have hit every bar in town. That means they'll split us up. We'll probably never see each other again. I'll be dragged from the courtroom, and I'll die alone in an orphanage. You wouldn't be alone if you were in an orphanage. Come on, Sissy, cheer up. We'll make it. We always have, right? They can't separate us, even if Uncle Gus isn't here to help us. I won't let them. Of course not. I'll save us. I'm Judge Robert J. Franklin. I chose the law as my way of serving my fellow citizens. As an elected judge in the family court, I pray each day that God will give me the wisdom to always temper justice with mercy. All rise. What you're about to see is a dramatization of an actual case in family court. Because of the emotional and sensitive nature of the issues presented here, Judge Franklin's courtroom is closed to the public. The proceedings are about to begin. I do. You may be seated. All right, Miss Page, let's begin. Your Honor, this is a hearing to place the four Matlock children, Elizabeth, age 17, Terry, 15, Chip, 11, and... Sissy Nine in foster care. Mm -hmm. Appearing for the state is social worker Mitchell Green and mm -hmm. Maude Simpson, a neighbor of the Matlocks. Mr. Gus Edling is scheduled to testify, but he isn't present here at the moment. I see that all parties are proceeding without attorneys in this matter. I'm willing to go along with that for now, but I want you all to know that I will delay the proceedings and appoint an attorney for the Matlock children if I think it's necessary. Now, since this is a hearing and not a trial, I'd like to conduct it more on the lines of a family council. I remember when my youngsters were growing up, we had a lot of these family council meetings. I don't think they'd have told me everything I needed to hear if they thought they were on trial. This guy's cool. It won't be necessary for anybody to take the witness stand up here. You can all testify from where you are. All right. Now then, who is this Gus Edling that we're waiting for? That's our Uncle Gus, Your Honor. Uh -huh. He takes care of us. <laughs> he's not here yet. He had a business appointment. Yeah, he's going to be late, but he'll be here if he finishes on time. And that's a very big if, Your Honor. We have no reason to believe this man even exists. Well, I guess I'd better get to know the people who are here, and then we'll deal with Uncle Gus. You, sir, are Mitchell Green, correct? Yes, Your Honor. Mm -hmm. I represent the Department of Social Services. Mm -hmm. We contend that these minor children are, in fact, living outside the law with no protection. Uh, now, just a minute, Mr. Green. Let me get everybody straight first. You must be Sissy. Uh-huh. What's your name? Well, thank you for asking, Sissy. I'm Judge Robert Franklin. Do we call you Bob? Chip, we've already been through this. We call him Your Honor. Please excuse him, Your Honor. We've never been in court before. Yeah, he's just scared. I am not. If you don't knock it off right now, I'll give you a reason to be scared. I'm Elizabeth Matlock. You can call me Lizzie. I'm the oldest. I'm Terry. She may be the oldest, but I'm the man in the family. Except for Uncle Gus. <laughs> oh, of course, except for Uncle Gus. And you must be Chip. Yes, sir. I've always wanted to be in a court. My great-grandfather was a judge in Virginia, back at the turn of the century. Oh, sit down, Chip. We're in court. We're supposed to stand. Uh, would you like us to stand? Or take the witness stand? I'd be glad to do that. And you can question me, and I'll tell you all about us. Oh, well, sit down, yeah. Chip. <laughs> well, thank you, Chip. It won't be necessary to take the witness stand. You take the witness stand so the attorney can ask you questions, but today I'm asking the questions, and I want you right there where you are. He wants to keep his eye on us. Chip, I mean a chipper. That's right, Chip. Plus, I kind of get to relax a little bit, too. Your Honor, if I may... It's because of Chip that we're here today. His outrageous stories in school attracted a teacher's attention, and when um, Uncle Gus didn't come in for a conference, 
The school asked us to check on the family. Yeah, so shut up. And we discovered that these four children somehow rented a little house and have been living in it with no adult supervision for the past three months. We have not. It would be we helpful if you were quiet, Chip. Shut up. Your honor is like Uncle Gus. He needs the quiet. That's right, Sitsy. I haven't even met this last lady over here. You're uh, Maud Simpson? That's me. I mm. just turned them off, Your Honor. That's the only way I got to live next door to them so long. Well, thank you, Mr. Simpson, but I can't do that. As a matter of fact, I've got to really open my ears to find out what should happen to these youngsters. Now, Mr. Green, your department feels they should be placed in foster homes. He wants to split us up. Your Honor, I don't want to split up this family, but it's virtually impossible to find a placement that wants four children. Well, yes, I can certainly understand that. Now, perhaps somebody had better start at the beginning. Lizzie, do you want that job? Yes, sir. Our parents were killed in a car crash two years ago, and we came here to live with Uncle Gus. What's wrong with that, Mr. Green? Oh, it's just fine, except there is no Uncle Gus. There is no adult supervision of any kind. And Uncle Gus is an imaginary person who has been fabricated, uh, probably by Chip, in order to trick the law into allowing these children to run wild on their own. We're we don't wild. Wild. Oh, have a situation. We Your have Honor, control. Your Honor, I have an extensive report here from Ivy Jones of Mayview Social Services, mm -hmm. who was assigned to find uh, foster care for the children after their parents' death. Mm -hmm. well, what was the problem with Mayview? Miss Jones found two good placements so the kids would be divided two and two. Mm -hmm. She came to pick up the kids and they were gone. Mm -hmm. It wasn't until about six months later that they reappeared. They came back to Mayview? No, they turned up in another school district in Bell Park. They came to social services attention when one of the kids got sick, a high fever, and the family couldn't be contacted. Someone at the school checked the address and found it was an abandoned house mm -hmm. filled with runaways, maybe 15 to 20 of them. Your mm. Honor, we lost Uncle Gus's address. We had to live somewhere. But you could have gone into placement until you found Uncle Gus. They were going to split us up. And I knew Mom wouldn't like that. Or Dad. Or us. We'd probably never find each other again. Another caseworker sent out a tracer, found Miss Jones' report, and got social services moving. But once again, the Matlocks disappeared and didn't turn up until three months ago in our city, 400 miles away. May I see that report? Of course, Lizzie. This isn't true. It says, living in filth and disease. The house wasn't too nice, Your Honor, but our room was clean. Yeah, Lizzie made us stay away from everybody. We scrubbed our room and our bathroom every day. She wouldn't let anybody else use our bathroom. Nobody wanted to. There's always wet clothes hanging everywhere. I helped wash the clothes. The report said you were traced because of a sick child. What happened to that sick child? Me. When I went to pick Sissy up after school, I found out she'd been taken to the hospital. Terry and I got over there as fast as we could, and she hadn't been admitted yet, so we got her out. How did you get the hospital to release her without an adult in attendance? Um, Your Honor, um, um, the report states that Mr. Matlock sent a note with his daughter requesting a phone call. The admitting office called the number given, talked to Mr. Matlock, and release Sissy. Well, Lizzie? Terry was waiting in a payphone. We had to get Sissy out of there before social services got on our tail. But it was too late. They raided us. Police, guns. Everybody ran out of the house but us. They were using tear gas. Came breaking in our room with machine guns. We were all huddled in the corner behind our mattress. Ah, uh, Chip? Remember, you're under oath. Were those the facts, Mr. Green? No, Your Honor. When social services found the house, they did report it to the police. Now, nobody would tackle a house like that alone or unarmed. The subculture of runaways is riddled with drugs, and a lot of these kids have weapons. Now, uh, tear gas and machine guns, 
That's an exaggeration. Your Honor, it wasn't the best situation for our family. But it was the best I could think of at the time. We'd lost our house and social services was on the way. We had to move fast. Excuse me. Your Honor, could we take a break? I think a short recess is in order. Be back in five minutes. Where's the... Outside and down the hall to the left. Thank you. Mr. Green, I think I have a pretty good picture of the Matlock's life at uh, Mayview and Bell Park. I'd like to know now how they're getting along here. Those kids steal everything in sight. They destroy my flowers, steal fruit from my trees. They even try to steal my cat. We never try to steal your cat. That's not true. Is it, Sissy? Sissy has something she'd like to tell you, Your Honor. Mm -hmm. I confess, I did let Mr. Friend to my room and feed him and call him. He was so lonely outside. He didn't want to go out when she called him either. See, I told you she did it, but they wouldn't admit it except under oath. That band of hoodlums sticks together. You ought to know, hanging over the back fence, spying on us through the bushes. Yeah, I see you camouflaging yourself. All right, Chip, now that's enough. Thank you, Sissy, for telling the truth. You may sit down now. Your Honor, when the family moved in, I went over to see them. A good neighbor called. I mm -hmm. took them a casserole and asked to see their mother. She thanked me and said their mother was at the market. Mm -hmm. Days passed, but the mother never returned my call, so I asked the little one about it. She cornered Sissy and started pumping her. I invited her in for something to eat. Well, the child ate like she'd never seen a cookie before. We have a tight budget, Your Honor. We can only afford cookies on special occasions. Mm -hmm. And we only get one at a time. Oh, but she must have eaten 20 at my house and three glasses of milk. And she told me that there was no mother or father. Oh, then when she realized what she told, she got frightened, told me not to tell, and then she ran out of the house. Mm -hmm. Later that night, I confronted the oldest one again, and she lied through her teeth. What did you uh, tell Mrs. Simpson, Lizzie? That we live with Uncle Gus. We take care of ourselves, sir. We never cause her any trouble. Sometimes the kids, well, Chip, climbed her apple tree and took some apples once, but she said he could. I never told him that. You did. You told him why we were eating cookies that we could climb a tree and eat all the apples we wanted. And when Chip climbed the tree, you called the police. Is there a police report on this? Oh, the policeman was incompetent. I explained what happened to the policeman. I told him he could come back later and talk to Uncle Gus. And he said, that old busybody calls us once a week. Don't worry about it. Plus, I ate the evidence. There was nothing he could do. They're a public nuisance, Your Honor. I'd complain to their landlord, but he lives across town. All he cares about is getting the rent paid. And having his property improved. Your Honor, the house was a mess. It had been empty for a long, long time. Uncle Gus and I made a deal with the landlord. We'd fix it up for him, and he'd pay for materials. We'd painted, we'd, we'd kept the lawn nice. Mm-hmm. But I thought you said this was your Uncle Gus's house. Well... Uncle Gus didn't have a house that was big enough for all of us. Mm -hmm, I see. When would Uncle Gus be here? Uh, we don't know, Your Honor. He said he had a business appointment, but uh, he'd definitely be here before the hearing started. If you'd like, I can go out and look for him. Your Honor, this is the same runaround I always get. There's always some excuse for Uncle Gus. He's at the bank. He doesn't feel well. He'll call you back. There is no Uncle Gus. Leave me alone. I'm all right. I've got to get in there. I'm looking for my kids. Yes, that's him. Uh, Bailiff, will you check the hall, please? See if that's Mr. Edling. I can walk by myself, sir. Oh, good afternoon. Well, I see the party's already started. We'll return to the judge. Uh, Mr. Edling, some question was raised about your existence, sir, so I'm glad that you've shown up. Uh, Miss Page, would you administer the oath, please? Yes, Your Honor. Raise your right hand. Do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Oh, yes, sir. -y. I'd like to uh, hear your side of this story, Mr. Edling, if you will, please. 
No, that won't be necessary. Just testify from where you are. <laughs> Whatever makes you happy. Fine. Okay, shoot. All right. Uh, why don't you tell us about your relationship with the Madlock children? <clears throat> yeah. I'm their uncle. Uh, their uncle, Gus. Mm -hmm. uh, they're my dear sister's children. Uh, my baby sister, uh, uh, Lizzie. Your Honor, the record states that Mrs. Matlock's name was Velma. Who is this man and why is he bothering us? Uh, thank you, Mr. Green. Where do you live, sir? Uh, with them, the dear little children. Could you tell us where the address? This man is a sore thumb. <clears throat> As Terry, he picks me up. Picks you up where, sir? Well, wherever I am. <laughs> you understand, sir, Rolling Stone. Mr. Redding, I must remind you that you've taken an oath, and perjury is an offense that's punishable by law. Now, sir, please tell us, what is your relationship to the Matlock children? Your Honor, I'll tell you. It's my responsibility. We'd saved some money in Bell Park, so we bought bus tickets to New Jersey. But when we got off here for a rest stop, we wanted to stay. And that afternoon, we found our wonderful house. I, I knew no one would rent to kids, so we found Uncle Gus. I found him, sir. I know the streets. Cleaned up and dried out. He makes a first-rate uncle. Uncle Gus is the only lie, Your Honor. We've kept our word about the house. I love that house. It's the best place we've been since Mommy and Daddy left us. Well, if I'm finished here, I think I'll partake of a little liquid refreshment. Would you care to join me, Your Honor? Uh, no, thank you, sir. But I would like to know exactly what your contribution has been to the Matlock children's household. Well, my body and, and my time. But I, I've received fair remuneration for that. So you don't live with the Matlocks? Oh, no. No. They're willing. I stayed for a night or two when they first moved in. But it's a little house, Your Honor. Only two bedrooms, and, and I'm a man who needs my privacy. But I'm proud to say I kept my word. If you'd have kept your word and showed up at school, we wouldn't be here now. Yeah. They thought you were a figment of my imagination. Well, I showed up this time, didn't I? Yes, you did, sir, and I want to thank you for that. But I also want to know how all of you managed to pay the rent and live. Terry, how did you make money? I've got a job at a fast food place before and after school. And I work cleaning houses. I deliver papers. And I help Livy. And who does the cooking and cleaning at home? Everybody. Lizzie has us all organized. Every penny we make, every job we do in the house, it's so boring. There's no room for any creativity. Your Honor, the fact is these youngsters have no adult supervision. So far they've managed on their own, but what if real tragedy struck? You think your mom and dad dying isn't real tragedy? We had to cope then, and we had to do it in less than a week. And you moved into an abandoned house with other runaways. All right. I think I've heard enough to make a decision. We'll take a five-minute recess. I'll return with a decision. Next time on The Judge. I earned whatever I got from Regina. By sleeping with her? By being her manager. Everything from stir-fry to chicken pot pie, and then some. The lively taste of Tabasco sauce. Don't keep it bottled up. Shout. Now with 25% more cleaning power. Want a tough stain out? Shout it out. Fast, effective heartburn relief? Tum to tum tum. Sodium free? Tum to tum tum. Rich in calcium? Tum to tum tum tums. Lizzie, Terry, Chip, Sissy, it's a real joy to meet a bright and loving family like yours. You obviously learned well from your parents. And I'm sure that if they could be here today, they'd be very proud to see how your love has held the Matlock family together. Mr. Green, I appreciate the difficult job social services has, and I appreciate your concern for this family. Because of all this, I'm going to make a most unusual decision today. Lizzie, how old are you? Seventeen and a half, Your Honor. In six months' time, you'll legally become an adult. Until then... I'm going to emancipate you, Lizzie. That means you'll be an adult in the eyes of the law, with all the legal rights and responsibilities of an adult, including the right 
to rent a house and raise your own family. Oh, no. Do we have to call her mommy? <laughs> no, no, sissy. But it does mean you can all stay together without breaking the law. Mr. Green, I'd like you to see that social services gives this family, all these nice young people, every bit of help they need, including a caseworker to visit them regularly to help them with any unusual problems. Yes, Your Honor. Lizzie, you probably think I'm a jerk for dragging you to court like this, but uh, if you could find a way to forgive me, I'd like to be your caseworker. No way! Jim, we'd have to take a vote. All those in favor of Mr. Green being our caseworker, raise your hand. Well, that's settled. Mrs. Simpson, you said something earlier about being a good neighbor. I'd like you to give it another try, if you will. I don't see any reason in the world why you and the Matlocks can't live next to each other as neighbors and as friends as well. Finally, Mr. Edling, I know that you meant well in trying to help the Matlock children, but it doesn't appear that you really considered the consequences. You were lucky this time. The Matlock children are a very special case. But I'd like for you to promise me, sir, that if any children ask you to lie for them again, you will point them toward social services. Oh, I don't want any more trouble, sir. No, you've got my word on that. Good. God bless you all. And keep on being good to each other. That's all. This court stands adjourned.